Last week, we've got leading indicators, and they rattled the cage of the stock market just somewhat. At the same time, we're seeing a cyclical shift out of these high-flying AI stocks, which in my opinion are quite overvalued, overpriced, and are going to readjust. Maybe a reckoning coming as soon as we get NVIDIA reporting. I think it's about August 15th or so. So we're seeing some movement out of the high-flying stocks into more value. This is something that I've focused on considerably. The Dow 30 has been lagging the market over the past several months. It's starting to catch up. I've got some charts I want to break down showing you what leading indicators that did rattle the cage of the stock market. They're kind of a lagging indicator, not really a big deal. But at the end of this week, we get that big deal. Personal incomes, personal expenditures, this is how I look at the economy first and foremost. I ask the question, what's going on with the consumer? Over 70% of the economy is consumer driven and the consumer's report will be showing up this week. Stacked inside there, PCE index, which of course is the uh, price index for or price deflator for expenditures and what uh, consumers actually spend and whether or not inflation is taming as much as it is. We're getting a duality of what's going on. On the one hand, yeah, inflation is slowly getting there to the targets that the Federal Reserve is looking for. At the other end, on the other hand, of course, it's at the expense of the economy. We are seeing the economy slow down. What will happen with the stock market? Let's jump in and I'll show you a few charts. Here we're looking at a chart for the conference board's leading index. This is what we got. And as you can see, it's slowly just trickling lower and lower and lower, but it's doing so from a very elevated level. So when we the market sees this kind of moving lower and lower, it's like, well, yeah, but it's still well above median. My take, however, is that it is going to continue much lower simply because the economy isn't going to grow at a rapid pace like it has been. We're, we've just crossed 4% in unemployment. This is still very low unemployment, although unemployment is increasing. It's still at a very low level though. So basically what we're seeing is the rate of growth of our economy is going to slow down. That should tell you high flying stocks are going to start selling off. And we're starting to see that at the same time, Nvidia, this has pushed so many of these high tech stocks to levels that are way out of line with normalized value investing principles. But they also print big numbers quarter after quarter after quarter. That won't go on forever. That won't go on for eternity. And at some point, NVIDIA is going to come out and say, modest growth, pretty good, but not nearly as big as what we'd seen before. And because of that, these high flying AI stocks are going to just implode from there. At the same time, we're seeing the economy not grow as fast because of that. These high flying stocks are going to hit uh, savvy traders are going to hit the brakes real fast. So this leading indicator or leading index, for me, it's kind of a lagging index. Here's a look at what the personal incomes versus personal expenditures charts look at. And this is, for me, my analysis from an economist standpoint, this is where I start everything. The rate of growth of personal incomes pushes the rate of growth of personal expenditures. If we see an expanding income base, then we'll see an expanding expenditure base, which would drive the business cycle or the demand cycle. This numbers, the numbers we're seeing right now are just sub 2.5% and that's below median. But we're, we're working in an economy that has a very high employment level. So we're getting back to more modest levels. And that's understandable considering that the Federal Reserve has left interest rates for higher for longer and they probably likely will continue to do so for some time. Here's a look at SPY stock. Um, last uh, week, of course, specifically Friday, now I do a lot of uh, straddles and strangles on a daily basis for with SPY stock, QQQ, sometimes DIA. 
uh, depending on the day of the week, they only have one expiration day per week. Uh, so I'll do a lot of options trades with these. And Friday's uh, price level for options at the money was just too price in cost prohibitive. They were uh, normally I pay about anywhere from say a buck seventy five for at the money calls to maybe two twenty five on a daily basis, and that's pretty standard given where uh, the VIX is at this point. Last Friday, I think it was like three fifty. So uh, you can see the big move that we saw had on Thursday from the leading index. Friday, I think the market was pretty nervous as to what could potentially happen given what had happened just the day before. And yet, even though I didn't pull the trigger because I felt that those options were a bit too expensive, the market still moved enough I would have been profitable. Uh, I just I just felt like the risk wasn't there. I didn't. I thought that the Thursday's move was a little overdone and that we'd probably see an inside day for Friday. We did not. Uh, but let's take a look at here's SPY stock versus QQQ, which of course is the blue uh, percentage bar up above, and then DIA is below in the orange. We're starting to see these merge back together. SPY stock's been kind of stuck in the middle, as QQQ might sell off significantly, but DIA stock, we're seeing these stocks kind of moving back upward, catching up with the rest of the market. So we're seeing this shift out of these higher flying tech stocks into low valued uh, or va value stocks that are underpriced relative to their actual value, relative to alternative investments. We're starting to see the DIA Dow 30 kind of pick back up and you can see that we were at one point DIA stock was basically at 0%. It's kind of merging back closer to what the rest of the market is doing. Do I believe that it's going to continue to do so? Not really, because overall the economy is going to slow down, which means a lot of these stocks are going to go ahead and start sliding lower overall. Here's a look at, this is a stock I've been putting a lot of emphasis on because this one for me is kind of a, a, a no-brainer. This is TLT stock, and I've been buying a lot of TLT stock back in April, I think it was. I bought a lot at about 8750, 88, and 89, uh, and I've been sitting on these for some time. Now, we've not really moved much. We crossed 90, and I thought about adding more in at 90. TLT stock is the ETF versus US Treasury bond prices, 20 and 30 year. Uh, the longer dated bonds. So this is basically bond price for uh, uh, TLT stock. It's, it's, it'd be the inverse of actual yield. My take, interest rates will move lower at some point, three, four, six, nine, 12, 18 months out. Because of that, TLT stock will move higher. What I've been doing in between, when we get a move down close to 90, I start. I get in and I'll start doing uh, credit spreads, selling credit spreads, which is an option strategy for those who aren't quite as technical on that, uh, and just bring in either theta or uh, bring in that spread. It's a credit spread to me. Um, I may sell puts outright. I'll take the position. I don't care because my expectation is interest rates eventually will go lower and so therefore TLT stock will move higher. In the meantime, we've been stuck and that's perfectly fine with me. I still get that yield dividend uh, coming from TLT, uh, but it's just a matter of when the Federal Reserve makes its first move. I've seen reports as early as September um, and I'm not really on board with that. I think the Federal Reserve is going to move at a very low, slow pace and it's going to be very begrudging to a lot of players that they're going to wait until they are clearly certain that uh, inflation numbers hit are, are targeting and moving towards that 2% level. We're not quite there yet, but last uh, two weeks ago, the CPI number sure did give us an indication that we're moving in the right direction. Um, oil, oil is starting to come back down. It had hit uh, close to 85, 84 half 
sitting around 84, then dropping back down to the 70 level, uh, 70 handle, as the economy doesn't expand as much with supply, what will happen is you're going to get your OPEC players who are going to start cheating. They've all agreed on a certain output level. And these OPEC players are going to start cheating because as demand declines, price will drop. They want to make as much money as they can. So they'll pump out either more oil or just continue at whatever levels they're at. And this brings in more premium or more revenue and profits for these companies and countries involved in OPEC, uh, that pushes price even lower. And eventually OPEC's gonna have to get together and sit there and say, all right guys, we need to cut this out in order to push price upward. I'm looking for the low end of the 70s on oil. And I expect over the course of this fall, we'll probably hit say 72 and a half. Uh, I haven't made any moves on oil, but eventually I'll start getting in pretty heavy on there. Once I see that OPEC is getting antsy, then I'll start selling some uh, options underneath. Um, the next chart, this is copper. Copper's been considered the PhD of economics. As the price of copper, let me, let me go backwards on that. As demand from manufacturing because of consumption is declining, the price of copper declines as well. Now this is CPER, which is the ETF versus copper, um, the actual physical metal. So this is basically the ETF for the metal itself. And um, we're starting to see numbers moving lower and lower. This says that broadly speaking, the world economies are slowing somewhat and, and demand is dropping because supply and also supply is increasing. So pri price must fall as well. I'm going to ke start keeping a sharp eye on this because when copper dropped below 27, for me, that was a sort of a signal that, yep, uh, the PhD of economics is telling us the world economies are starting to slow. Supply is building up. Price is dropping. This will be indicative across the board. It will also help out with inflation. So something to keep in mind. Um, my take on what's going to happen with the stock market continues to be absolutely consistent. I'm looking for NVIDIA on, I think it's August 15th. I'll check in a couple of days. It's not the biggest thing that I focus on right now. Their numbers should show a less progressive increase and all of a sudden a whole bunch of people are going to hit the sell button that will be the beginning of it but we're also seeing the economy start to contract somewhat the pace is not as high flying as it was before we're getting to moderate that in itself will drive the stock market lower these high flying stocks are going to start contracting savvy investors are going to start getting out at some point, it'll get kind of ugly, but this doesn't mean we're going to be looking at a recession. We're just seeing normalized growth rates. So the Federal Reserve will keep interest rates higher for longer, which would frustrate the stock market. At the same time, the economy will start to uh, slow down, which will frustrate the stock market. Eventually, however, the Federal Reserve is going to be in a position where they're going to have to really start accelerating their low, uh, lowering of interest rates. That's what I'm holding out for, especially with my TLT stock, because this is something that I think that is really going to start taking off eventually uh, as the Federal Reserve rushes to lower interest rates. At first, they're going to be real slow. Then it's going to be an avalanche. They're just going to be like, well, we got to get going. They've blown it left and right with so many times with leaving interest rates at the wrong level for too long. And I think they're going to do this once again. And I'm going to take advantage of that. My TLT stock will take off. And that's my year right there, to be honest with you. Uh, the rest of this is just gravy for me. That's how I trade. I base everything on the economy. The economy is starting to moderate, but eventually we'll go a little too far in the slowdown process. We're seeing the signals with oil, copper, and other commodity products. We're seeing the consumer slow down, and this will affect the overall stock market. 
I have said that I expect a lot of selling to happen in the fall. I said this last fall, September, October, November, I was talking about this. And everything, and I said that we would see all time highs all through the spring, which we had seen. So now I'll start getting ready for those that sell off. Make sure to hit the like and follow button. Also, my link to my Substack newsletter is down below. We'll see you next.